and working smarter, working with the employees in the Commonwealth, we made state government the smallest it has been in over 50 years. Promise kept. We who have nothing, and most likely will till we all end up locked up in jail by conservative Christian, right-wing Republican, straight white American man. Again, I don't remember that on the campaign trail as one of the promises, but if you if you can rewrite history, why not? Uh, he, he's he's attacked public workers and and workers in general on every front. So uh, if that's a promise he made to someone in a back room, well. Now he's out there saying that, yeah, he kept it. Sad, sad stuff. Welcome back to The Rick Smith Show. Check out the website, therigsmithshow.com. So what we're seeing is we're seeing this, this frontal attack on, on workers' rights, and it's coming from outside the state. And when we were in Wisconsin back in 2011, sleeping on the marble floor of the Wisconsin State Capitol, I remember broadcasting from inside one of the representatives' office saying, Pennsylvania, wake up, uh, organize now. All of these attacks that are going on in Wisconsin, well, they're going to be coming to us. And they have been. And from what I'm being told, well, uh, they're stepping it up, uh, which is why we've asked our good friend Wendell Young IV. He's the president of UFCW Local 1776 to come talk to us about this this, lo- this most recent piece of legislation that's come to my desk. Uh, 1507, uh, amending the Public Employee Relations Act of 1970. Wendell, thanks for taking time for us. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Thanks, uh, for, uh, thanks for actually joining us. I, I'm good. You know, I, I'm looking at this, and, and it's come to my desk that what we're hearing from some Republicans is they want to, and explain this to me, they want to stop uh, allowing the state to collect dues for public workers uh, because it's too expensive. Is this what I'm getting? Well, that, that's the, uh, uh, one of the things that the uh, wing nuts talk about is that the, uh, the state shouldn't have to put the cost to deduct the uh, uh, union members' dues of public employees and forward it to the union. They shouldn't be acting as a collection agent for the union. It's very deceptive to refer to it that way. Um, you know, the state of Pennsylvania, uh, the, the municipalities in Pennsylvania, the school districts, everybody is uh, well into the current century in terms of the payroll administration. They have automated payroll systems. Uh, Many of them are just exactly like, um, you know, ADP, paychecks, companies like that. They have some of them have their own systems. Some have uh, systems they're using. Uh, uh, but either way, it's automated. And automated payroll systems all across this country in public and private sector allow people uh, so many deduction slots. Um, you know, if you want to deduct for United Way, if you want to uh, deduct for a bank or a credit union. Um, so having a deduction spot there for your union dues is also part of it. So it's built into the platform. The platform accommodates a whole bunch of deduction slots. It doesn't cost the state or the city or the school district any more money to do that. And what unions here in Pennsylvania do is as part of the collective bargaining process, uh, say, uh, just like the health care deductions or the pension deductions, you know, the state also deducts for the you know employees' pension contribution, right. the portion they pay in their health care. So just like that, the unions negotiate that the payroll deduction can also be made for union dues. Yeah, so, um, so if you so, know, having and myself, so you know what my point is, Rick. There's, there's no expense, there's no economic burden on the taxpayers, on the state, or anybody else. So then the question that I have then, if, if it's not what they're telling me, because they're telling me it's just, it's just too much money, it's, it's so expensive, if it's, th- if it's not that, uh, then, you know, you go back to, you know, Roman times and Cicero, Quae Bono, you know, who benefits from, from doing this? If it's not about saving the taxpayers' money, then who's it really benefiting? Well, the, the, the wing nuts uh, led by uh, Daryl Metcalf out in the western part of the state are upset that they have not gotten their agenda through. Uh, and, and who is it? that they believe is blocking their agenda? Well, the labor movement, in a very organized fashion, has done a great job bringing to light the problems with the ultra-conservative wing-nut agenda. And they're pissed off that they're not getting their way on everything they want to do. So what do you do? You defund and silence the people who are crying foul and calling you on the carpet to be accountable for what you're trying to do. So that's all they're trying to do is to silence workers, silence their unions by defunding them. They know 
that if they can get some of these measures passed that would prohibit, uh, uh, you know, the state or the municipalities or the school districts, any public uh, entities, uh, from uh, entering into agreements to deduct those dues, that it will reduce the funding to the unions and therefore make it harder for the unions to be a voice on behalf of working families and show these uh, these people for what they really are, ultra-conservative wing nuts that are out to do the work of the corporations, of the uh, uh, conservative groups like the Commonwealth Foundation or the Koch brothers and and folks of that ilk. And that's all this is about. That's all this is about. So when we when we talk to people, because look, I mean, it, it sounds like an issue that you you know most people gloss over. It's it's in the weeds. Uh, for me, at the end of it, it it seems to me that this is nothing more than 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 retaliation. This is nothing more than we have the power, well, to crush you, uh, and we're going to use the big money from the special interest to do it. Hey, you're right, because if if they really were worried about how people's money are being used. Um, first of all, you know, if you're a union member, you have to sign authorizations for those kind of deductions you, when you first become a member, uh, just like you have to sign one for a bank deduction and other things. And, and you know, we all do that in the labor movement administratively. Um, you have to uh, – you get to vote for your union officials. You get to vote for your labor contract. And you actually have the right as a public employee to opt out of your union. Um, you still have to pay a fee in Pennsylvania if you opt out of your union because the law also requires the union to represent uh, all of those workers and do the job for them, and they have to be compensated um, with all the benefits uh, that the union contract brings. So, um, you, you know, the workers have, have lots of different ways to deal with this issue, so there's no issue that workers are pushing this. This is being pushed by conservative groups like the Commonwealth Foundation, uh, by the uh, the Koch brothers and different groups like Freedom Works, uh, by you know Daryl Metcalf, those kind of people, uh, and it's not being done because you have uh, you know masses of union members out there saying you know we need this uh, uh, you know to protect our paychecks. That's that's just nonsense. This is being funded by conservatives and corporations. You know if they were really um, interested in, in fairness, um, they would be arguing that publicly traded companies. Uh, would have to do the same thing, that they wouldn't be allowed to use their monies for political purposes. You know, shareholders buy shares of companies, and they may vote on different initiatives, but they don't make the decisions about whether they're going to contribute some of that money to the Commonwealth Foundation or other similar groups and, you know, which issues they're going to lobby for and not lobby for. I mean, this is just singling out labor unions to silence them. That's all this is about. Yeah, and, what, and another thing that bothers me in this is it's basically making it illegal for an employee and the employer to sit down and negotiate and negotiate a contract and come to an agreement. They're, they're you know, for the people who say that we want government out of your life and we want less intrusive government, this seems like a major intrusion. You're absolutely right because think about it. They're only they're only going after the dudes, right? Um, the labor union also negotiates uh, over how much, if any, people are going to pay for their health care and their pensions. And not always the pensions. Sometimes that's a matter of state law. But the union negotiates over, um, and I talk about, I'm talking about the employee portion of the pension and the health care contribution. Right. And the union also negotiates over, um, is that money um, going to be deducted from the paychecks or not? How is it going to be paid? And you know, what's the frequency of the payment and the amount of the payment, all that kind of stuff. And they're not talking about stopping that. And the union also negotiates the right for workers to have uh, payroll deduction for personal banking or for uh, United Way or for, um, um, oh, what was I going to say, uh, the credit union, like the Pennsylvania State Employee Credit Union. You know, nowhere in this legislation is it saying that you're not going to be allowed to make deductions for employees to belong to the Pennsylvania State Employee Credit Union. They're not saying that, are they? No. This is only geared to silence unions because the ultra conservative key banger wing nuts are upset that they're not getting everything they want out of this uh, out of this governor and this legislature, and they have a scapegoat in the unions because we go to Harrisburg and we get on shows like this, Rick, and, and we you know take out commercials and we lobby and we point out the problems with their agenda, and everybody doesn't agree with them, so they want to silence us. So at the, the end of the day, voice, we're the loudest voice against their agenda. 
So at the end of the day, the, the message away from this is just this is just basically uh, Machiavellian uh, retribution. Well, I guess you could use the term Machiavellian. Uh, I'm not sure that they're that uh, that uh, clever. It's pretty obvious what they're trying to do. Not, Let me ask you not, another question then, because you know the other th- the other thing that gets me, Wendell, is is we hear about uh, government being uh, wasting money, the waste, fraud, and abuse, and we hear about we hear conservatives saying we're good stewards of the taxpayer dollar. And I look at Governor Corbett's scheme to privatize the lottery, where we spent millions of dollars, uh, I would say wasted millions of dollars, uh, trying this scheme. How much are we spending pushing this corporate agenda to attack workers and and really to do things that nobody nobody is calling for other than the very well to do in this country well it, you know it, you raise a great point um i don't recall what the price tags up to now the state paid uh I, I think just the legal fees alone are close to 50 million on the lottery deal uh i'm sure there's a whole lot of other expenses you know there's a, a an expense in having all these administrative staff people you know there's some some portion of their time there for their total compensation and you know, the whole operation of government, a certain amount of the overhead was dedicated to this multi-year, you know, folly uh, to, to do the lottery. And the same with the liquor privatization. Um, you know, you, you, you've got um, things like the voter ID bill. You know, it, it can't produce one case of voter fraud based on ID. Um, yet what have we, what, what have, what's the government now spent here in Pennsylvania? Several hundred million dollars? Yeah. Uh, uh, in not only the the uh, legal fees, but all the money to explain to voters over and over again what they did or didn't do, um, and how it's supposed to work, and the defense of it, and the arguments. I mean, it, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, well, um, just a million you know, nobody's dollars. Screaming, nobody's screaming accountability for that. Yeah, just a million dollars before the last election to promote a law that's not even in place yet. I kept telling people, you need an ID, but it might be coming. Don't worry about it. We're going to waste your money anyway. And I I guess i got to be honest, I don't know that I would be upset if if times were good, if if we were uh, funding education fully, if we were taking care of the least vulnerable in our society, if if our roads and our bridges were state-of-the-art and we had broadband access and public transportation and all of the things that this governor has defunded, uh, maybe I wouldn't be is upset, but I gotta be honest. Like many people, I'm ticked off at this guy. Yeah, well, and clearly that's a good reason his poll numbers are where they are. Um, so no surprise there. You brought up the wine and spirit shops, and I wanted to finish up with this because you know I, I understand this is like the lottery, maybe still on the table. Uh, they still want to steal the wine and spirit shops, and help me help me walk through this the history of this because I remember at the beginning of it they threw out this eye popping number of two billion dollars, and then by the time you got down to it, it was a couple hundred million, and and then it was it wasn't even about the money; it was some of the core functions of government or oh, some oh, nonsense. Rick, it's, it's worse. It's worse than that. If you go back a little more than three years ago to when the uh, uh, conservatives shored up both houses of the legislature and won the governor's seat. Um, Mike Terzai announced uh, immediately after the election, and remember back then we were looking at a a multi-billion dollar state budget deficit as a result of the recession and the impact of the recession. Um, uh, Like a lot of states, you know, we were not unique. And uh, budget deficit of of billions of dollars. And Mike Terzai announced very publicly, it's all in print, um, that we could sell the liquor stores for $6 billion. Wow. And and not only uh, close the back then numbers anywhere from, depending on who you talk to, two and a half to four billion deficit were being uh, uh, bounced around. And he was absolutely convinced six billion. So as the debate... um, uh, uh, raged going into January of 2011, he started to back off that number, and he started to back down and say it was about four to six billion. Then it was about three or four billion. Then eventually, by uh, uh, you know the the as, uh, the winter was starting to uh, defrost in 2011, he was saying maybe two billion uh, net. Um, and then eventually, it became clear that there wasn't a multi-billion-dollar windfall for the state. Um, and and the, the real uh, clinker for Terzai was when the governor's own study in 2011 came out and said that uh, the, the, the uh, likely um, the likely uh, 
uh, take would be significantly lower, uh, depending on which track they took, how they did it, and numbers more like a billion or, or 800 million. But also in the study showed that there were hundreds of millions of dollars in costs associated with winding the system down. And then as they further studied it, testimony was brought forward by, you know, people in the field, it became clear that they weren't going to get any windfall. That in the best case scenario, they might get 350 to 500 or 600 bill, uh, million, but there was still that $400 million price tag to unwind the current system and other costs associated with unwinding the system that were not studied in the uh, governor's uh, consultant study. So we were actually looking at losing money. And Terzai, by 2012, was saying to people, it doesn't matter if we make money or not because this is a philosophical issue. And, and you know, when people lead with philosophy, that it's about philosophy, it's because they can't win the argument on the merits of the facts. And it had become clear to everybody in the building by mid-2011 that they weren't going to be able to close a budget deficit, that there wasn't going to be a windfall up front, and that the system is making money compared to Terzai saying it was losing money. And it was not a failed system. In fact, the trajectory is upward, and it continues to make more money every year we've been debating this. Record profits, record tax collections, uh, record sales. Um, he said that we had a system that the product costs more money with lower selection than other states, and that's absolutely been proven untrue, that we have better pricing than every one of our border states and better selection. The only exception is the state of Delaware, and all consumer goods in Delaware are cheaper in Pennsylvania and will be if you were to privatize liquor still because they don't tax consumer goods in, on, in Delaware on anything. Right. So whether it's electronics or liquor or anything else, there's no taxes. And unless Pennsylvania is going to eliminate all the taxes on liquor, we'll never beat Delaware. And, and once, you know, we've been very vocal about this and we have spent a lot of money on this and it ties back what I said earlier about trying to defund us. If you go to the Commonwealth Foundation's website right now, um, I, I guess I should be flattered. Uh, uh, they have a video about this paycheck protection, as they call paycheck protection, we call paycheck deception. They have a video, and I'm the main villain in their video. Why is that? Because my members have chosen to fight. My members have chosen to take a stand, and they and, and, you know, with, with the people I work with on behalf of those members and with those members, we've spent a lot of time in Harrisburg uh, fighting this privatization, showing the flaws in Mike Terzai's uh, comments and the governor's comments, showing that the system actually makes money, great selection, lower prices, uh, good jobs, doesn't, tax, it doesn't cause the taxpayers to pay anything. It actually makes money for the taxpayers, and they're pissed off about that. So they want to silence us, and they want to do it by taking away the money that we use to expose their lies. So what do we do to stop this? I mean, I, 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 outside of election time, uh, throwing the bums out, what do we do? Well, um, that, you know, you're right. We have to throw them out. We have a, a great opportunity to get rid of the wing nuts. And, and you know, I, I'm not going to suggest, you know, you just got to you know, elect all Democrats to get rid of all Republicans. But in this case, we definitely need a Democratic governor. There is no options on the Republican side because there's too many weenies out there that won't take on 450, even though they don't like them themselves. Um, out of party loyalty, we've got a great field of Democratic candidates for governor. The good thing is there's a lot of really good people, which means we'll have a great discussion and conversation about you know the issues that are important to working families. But the problem is there's a lot of Democrats in the field, and that's going to use up a lot of resources trying to decide which one of those will survive and uh, make it through the primary. Uh, they're all good people, though. Uh, I have a great deal of respect for all of them. Our union has endorsed Rob McCord. Uh, you know, we're certainly going to do everything we can to, uh, to advance this campaign. I think you get a, a good governor in there, uh, uh, in this case a Democrat, uh, to bring a, a reasoned conversation back to Harrisburg. And you also have half the Senate up for re-election and the entire House. And I think you have to look at the wing nuts. The people who are responsible for the paralysis in, in government in terms of the legislative process the, are the same kind of people that are causing the same problem in other states than Washington, D.C., and you got to get rid of them. Yeah, the Stephen um, Blooms of the world, the, the Cutlers, the, uh, the Metcalfs. 
you got to get rid of the extremists in, on the on the right, and, um, and so that people, you know, there are there are reasonable people in both parties that would like to see some good things done. That would have liked to avoid wasting the time on this lottery folly, on the liquor folly. You know, there's there's great things that the legislature could do to allow the, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board to do a better job. You know, the, if you listen to Mike Thursday, what he doesn't like about the Pennsylvania Liquor Report. Liquor Control Board, he's responsible for. You know, as the leader of the House, yeah. he's been blocking the legislative effort, efforts that would uh, that would bring changes to the law that would allow the liquor stores to be more consumer responsive. He won't do it. He's standing in the way. So if you get rid of the crazy, the reasonable people in both parties, I think, will sit down and solve a lot of problems, improve our, our jobs picture in Pennsylvania, uh, get Medicaid expansion so that you know, those people that uh, don't have health care, need health care, want health care, uh, can get a subsidy through the uh, Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. Right now, Pennsylvania, unfortunately, you know, if you're at the lower end of the economic spectrum in terms of your salary and you need to get your benefits through the, through the federal exchange, you won't get a subsidy like people who make more money will because our governor chose not to expand Medicaid. Right. You know, we need to get rid of the crazies, and that starts with Corbett. And a, and a handful of those up. That starts right at the top. Wendell Young, it's always great having you on the program. I uh, appreciate you taking time for us. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much. Quick break. Right back with your thoughts. one 520 rick one 520 What do you think of all this? Right back. The USA is drowning in craft and lies. Save the USA and resume the ties and fight. Stop taking all our money shipping it offshore to the job you're in the Saving work in America, one show at a time. The Rick Smith Show.